I shredded. I was never told not to shred. I shredded because I thought it was the right thing to do. You are hereby released on the conditions indicated. These conditions will be in effect until your case is disposed of or until they are changed or amended by a judge. No! no, no Personal no, recognizance? No, no! Mother's no, custody? No! No! no, no Man, no, no. let's have a revolution. His name is Haile Selassie. The power of the Trinity. Jump. <laughs> Jumping is it. Jumping is what it's all about. If you can't jump, uh, I mean, this isn't your sport. <laughs> Jesus Christ, second coming. Yes, positively. Then, now, eternally. Fear factor is just, I don't know, it's, it's something that, that drives me, it pushes me. It's uh, something, if you see a, a big cliff that you don't really think you can make and you're, you're having second thoughts, that's when I think it gets fun. Yes, positively. Now, eternally! Yes? What's the most important thing to you right now? I'm trying to find a 59 dying station wagon. And food. I'm not worried about food. Once I get the wagon, I'll be able to drive anywhere in the world to eat. I just need to get there. The life of a man in exile is a difficult one. Looked up to by his peers, and down upon by society and its standards. Occasionally, these people in exile excel so far that what was once considered extreme becomes the new standard. That's what this movie's about. Snowboarders have never had real movies to call their own. Small segments in ski movies just weren't enough. It was time for a real snowboard movie to be made. If for nothing else, for those people who've watched the sport grow from its infancy. Those people who still remember being exiled from most major ski areas. A lot has changed since those early days. Snowboarders are allowed most everywhere now. Because every day, People like Damian Sanders, 
Steve Graham, Dave Sioni, and Chris Roach push snowboarding to the limits. The problem with taking something to the limits is that most people aren't ready for it. New ideas are very rarely welcomed with open arms. They look at you funny because your idea is new, not because it's bad. The biggest problem with any new idea is breaking down those barriers of misunderstanding and misconception. You can often be treated like a second-class citizen, not allowed the same privileges as everyone else. That was our problem. People assumed that snowboarders were not as good as skiers, and therefore didn't fully respect and appreciate the ability and skill of these athletes. We felt it was time to set the record straight. And so began the adventures of snowboarders in exile. First stop, Blackcomb, British Columbia, a spot called Lemmings Leap, named so by locals who watch numerous skiers try to use it as a straight jump, not understanding re-entry. To Chris Roach, a dream come true, a 20-foot high quarter pipe with five feet of vertical. part about the sport because you just go out with your friends and you have a great time and everybody's just pushing each other to the limits and I think that's what it's all about just getting big air and having a great time no one really cares that like if you don't do the biggest air or something they're not going to condemn you for it it's not like in a half pipe you're not being judged so you're out there just having a good time you're being judged by your friends but it's all in good fun John, in John, for John, in John. Webster's definition of exile is expulsion from one's country, banishment, prolonged absence from home or country. American ski areas labeled us too extreme, told us we were on the lunatic fringe, so we fled to Canada, where we heard they didn't care what you did. There were no out of bounds and no such thing as a contingency fee lawyer. 
We felt like we'd been in exile. We'd been in Canada for 10 cold days. But to tell you the truth, it wasn't so bad. Blackcomb and Whistler are located in British Columbia. They're two separate resorts that are connected by some of Canada's most rugged and beautiful terrain. They share in steepness, deep powder, and an open-mindedness towards snowboarding. While we were there, it snowed nine out of ten days. Sometimes it would snow so hard that from one run to the next, our tracks would be fully covered. We took the cameras out every day because this is what snowboarding is about. I think it's sport, snowboarding is always going to grow and get more popular and more people get into it. But uh, the more experienced riders are just going to start. I mean, there's only so much you can really do in a trick. Everything's getting reverted and uh, landing backwards and maybe in a, another twist on it. But how far can you go? Got to get upside down. <laughs> Damien told us about a spot to build a jump in the backcountry. 
Since the resorts wouldn't allow us to build jumps on their property, we started the hike up Mount Rose. is that every time you sue we get limited a little bit more because in America you can't do anything anymore. People think it doesn't affect you but every time we go out to build a jump somebody hassles us. Every time we build a jump at a ski resort we're building the most incredible jump. You would have had footage of this jump in this video if it weren't for lawsuits. But the ski patrol made us tear it down at Squaw Valley because of lawsuits. So every time you sue America you're messing up my life and I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> Weather reports came in from Jackson Hole. Big storms were blasting across Wyoming. Fresh powder. We loaded up Dave's Subaru and headed out across the desert. Or, or, or any top ramen. The scariest thing about snowboarding is free riding with Steve Graham, following him on his tail and following him off a drop off and not knowing what's behind it. A thought's there, though. That's the scariest thing about snowboarding. <laughs> The 20 hour drive from Lake Tahoe didn't seem like that much when we got to Jackson and saw the snow. It was some of the best snow they'd had all year. Every night, 12 to 18 inches of new would fall. And on a mountain with over 4,000 feet of vertical, this was a good thing. going out with your friends and adapting to the train and just fucking it up. You say you're sensitive, well hey that's the way I want you to live, the lights are too bright in the daytime, but that's alright with me.
Besides deep powder, Jackson is famous for its tram. It can take you from the bottom of the mountain to the top, 4,139 vertical feet in just under 10 minutes. Jackson's cliffs, steeps, and couars compare with the best. And in Jackson, even on a weekend after a storm, it's very unlikely you'll have to wait in line. Is there a life out there? I wanna bury you in the way you got most control, I still be a. Do you know any vampires, or is that just make believe? Can you really conceive manifest energy? Jackson, we drove to Loveland Pass, Colorado. With a little bit of hiking and a thumb to get a ride back to your car, you can make powder turns weeks after a storm. Be aware of avalanche danger and look for the cars with Boulder sorority stickers on them for the ride back. Dave raced back to Tahoe as Steve and the rest of the crew headed to the Varney Vertical Air Show. The storm of the winter had hit Tahoe, five new feet in two days. Steve Graham won two free tickets to Europe on American Airlines while Dave was winning back in Squaw Valley. Snowboarding to me is my life right now. I love it. There's nothing that could take me away from it. Um, except for my board getting stolen. Except for my board getting stolen. <laughs> <laughs> or breaking something, which I'm not going to do. Um, 
it means everything to me right now. Contests are good. I don't think it makes makes you the best snowboarder because some days you're on, some days you're off. I think everybody should just free ride. Uh, what makes me go off big cliffs is seeing guys do it and they tell me that I can't do it and I don't I just disagree with that and so I try and show them up. I think that any girl can be just as good as a, any guy. In the first years of snowboarding, ski areas wouldn't allow you to use their chairlifts or ride on their property. This exiled snowboarders into the backcountry, where they learned respect for the mountains, number one. And number two, if the snow is good in the resorts, then it's even better in the backcountry. Tom Burt took Damien and Steve to one of his favorite spots, Donner Summit, where the cliffs are big and there's no one to tell you what you can and cannot do.
brought, life is about taking risks. If you don't take risks, why even live? You know, I mean, what fun is it to walk around on a rubber world and be afraid of everything? You got to go out there and and try to outdo people because then it's just progression of the world. It makes it more fun to live. If you're gonna go, you're gonna go big. The next guy's gonna try to go bigger, and that's what it's all about. Graham makes me sick. He does everything in this. He's gonna get me hurt this year. As the winter continued, Damien received a call from the Victoria Snowboard World Cup in Japan. They wanted him to compete. Damien, the 1988 Japanese champion, figured this was his chance to win back the title. So with Brandy in tow, they started the Japanese tour. Things have got to change. Right now they say you can't do inverts in competitions and that's just so ridiculous because that's stopping the complete progression of the sport. The sport is just stagnating at the same old boring moves. Everyone was getting ready for the big race when Damien came up with his own ideas for base preparation. 500 yen and a yen for a good wax job, Damien headed off to the wax boy. Unfortunately, a 500 yen wax job lasts about as long as a sushi meal. 20 gates later and you're ready for another serving. The wax boy gave out just one gate short of the finish. Chock full of sushi and sake, Damien lost all hope of regaining his Japanese title. But after one last impromptu autograph session in a downtown Tokyo shopping center, we knew the Japanese would never forget Damien or Brandy. Um, I see it taking a different image than lately. Kind of more skateboard influence. People are going to start doing some shit.
this is snowboarders in exile is, is driving a car that isn't legal, push starting it everywhere. Living on the edge. Snowboarders in exile. A snowboarder in exile is someone who finds themselves flying to France for the single reason of pushing his limits to the next degree. Chamonix is one of the most massive and liberal resorts in the world. There, they don't care what you do as long as you pay the hospital bill. This was the obvious choice for Brian Harper, Dave Sione, Steve Graham.
arrived in Switzerland, our first order of business was to secure transportation to France. We didn't seem to be having much luck hitchhiking. Serious measures needed to be taken. Where should they go? Brian Harper knew where Bert Lamar kept his spare car. It didn't have registration, insurance, a spare tire, a starter, or a key. It was the perfect car for us. We stole it. We stole this car. This is not our car. Well, actually, this is uh, this is Bert Lamar's car. He doesn't know that we're using it. I don't know if he's gonna like it too much, but that's too bad. We needed it. I don't think it's gonna be in the same condition as, he, as when we picked it up, but we'll get it back somehow. went head on with a bus. I would have won.
Everyone gets offended if you don't speak French, but I don't speak French, so I offend everyone. It's tough. It's like they got a different word for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Chamonix, France was the birthplace of extreme skiing. You can find any sort of terrain imaginable right here. We didn't want to leave Chamonix, but as always, the Exile crew is running short on money and film. We also got a call from Damien. He said that the Black Home Windlip was happening. So we returned Bert Lamar's car, just a little worse for wear, and hopped a plane back for the States. The funnest time I've ever had snowboarding was the Black Hole Wind Lip. There's no jump like that. You could jump so high and so far and land the landings and just tweak so hard. Just even in hard boots, gosh. There was this guy tweaking in hard boots up there. You wouldn't have believed it. Um, but this jump, if they wanted to destroy this jump, it would be well worth driving all the way to Canada, jumping the jump one time and turning around driving all the way home. That's how great this jump is. We wanted to go back to Black Home to film at the infamous Wind Lip. But after they looked at our promotional clip, which included footage from our first trip, they determined that our image was just too extreme and denied us free tickets to shoot on their mountain. Once again, we were feeling the effects of exile. It sucked. Soon after that, Damien talked to a local granola eater who told of a huge jump behind Alpine Meadows at the base of Twin Peaks. After a couple hours of hiking, the reward was in sight. No, the uh, scariest time I ever had snowboarding is it's really any day we go riding with Damien. Because, uh, I mean, if there's anyone I've ever met, he's going the biggest, the highest, the fastest. Pushes you.
trick right now is grass for reverts. Made it up. I don't know. No one else does it. It's how, pretty cool. It's how fun. does it work? Then you go backside wall to a grasser and then keep rotating it. Over rotate it and land fakie. It's pretty cool. Indie poke to fakies. Over rotate it was good too. Winter had been over for three months when we received the call from Snowboarder Magazine. They asked if we wanted to go to film in New Zealand for ten days. For years we'd heard rumors of New Zealand's mile-long powder runs, helicopter rides that put hair on your chest, and bungee bridges well over 200 feet tall. Taking all this into consideration, we told them we'd think about it, as we hung up the phone and headed for the American Airlines check-in counter. First class, of course. Flying to New Zealand was more than any of us had bargained for. Their seasons are the opposite of ours. Here we were flying halfway around the globe in search of powder in the middle of our summer. Steve Graham had just come from the beach with double overhead swells fresh in his memory. Dan Donnelly said if there was snow, it was a go. Compassion is our direction. Don't stop your ear, I'd my cry. At Mount Hutt, you can use the chairlifts or access the backcountry by helicopter service. There's nothing like it. If you've got the dough, spend it on the helicopter. It's well worth it. Sing it in your heart. Sing it in your heart. Going to work and 
complaining about work all day. If uh, you're complaining about it so much, then why are you there? And uh, you should just be out doing what you want to do, no matter what you're doing, as long as you're having a good time. That's all that counts. Deep in a canyon, just outside of Queenstown, is the world-famous bungee bridge, Skippers, 230 feet of pure adrenaline. I thought that the trip was almost foiled twice, now we're here. Now I'm scared. <laughs> it's a good looking drop. It's not bad. It's kind of scary. It was, like, it was like, it was like before <laughs> when we couldn't make the trip. Seven. Yeah, shit, too bad. I would have jumped that so easy. <laughs> yeah, I would have sissy jumped. Yeah. What? You mean they're here? Uh, I just still don't think we're going to be able to go, though. I don't think we're going to have time. We're not going to make the flight. No, no, it won't go. We're going to try and get there? Yeah, I won't, that won't make it. <laughs> now we're here. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Now I'm swallowing lumps. <laughs> Skippers, I thought we were going for fish and chips, <laughs> but here we are. I won't be nervous until I'm standing right where he is right now. See, watch this, film this, hobbling out, <laughs> like you got one leg. And then, look at that thing and then, yeah, it's ready to break off. Yeah. It sure would be easy to chicken out. I sure would like to chicken out, but with a group of guys like Andy, <laughs> I'd rather jump off and die than get gurn the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, you look a bit scared over there. Yeah. One of you guys has got to do the elevator. Who's got the most? I'm um, gonna do it. Is it. Really? Is that better? What do you do? Do you step off like elevator. this? You gonna do it? Yeah. Well, the elevator is the most frightening way of getting off the bridge. Ready? Ignition sequence start. Engine start. Here we go. Five, four, four, three, two. two.
way to the Harris Mountains, we stopped at the Carew's Sheepskin Boot Factory. We told them we needed new boots. They said, catch them yourselves. Uh, the best thing about New Zealand is uh, waking up in the morning and not know what's going to go on. And by the end of the day, we've done about a million different things. Uh, you know, like bungee jumping and heli skiing. A uh, little bull riding, found a mechanical bull, that was pretty fun to ride. And uh, every day we did something different. definitely the land of adrenaline. If it scares you, then it must be worth doing. That's what the Kiwis believe, and I think we'd have to agree. And you can definitely bet we'll be back to the land of adrenaline next year. The winter was finally over, and not a bit too soon. Then we got a call from Thruster Water Ski Boards. They asked us to do some product testing on the new board. So with Chris Roach in charge, we headed out to the lake. It was a good winter. There were many enjoyable memories. Not to mention a few lessons learned. Snowboarding is still a new sport, but when we were at Mount Baker and saw five snowboarders to every skier, we knew that it was just going to keep growing. In the late 80s, the ski industry was faltering. It was predicted that it was a non-growth industry into the year 2000. 
But with the advent of snowboarding and recent snowboarder growth, the staticticians in their ivory towers are rethinking their forecasts and positions. 95% of all ski areas allow snowboarding today. That's pretty impressive considering that just three years ago that number was a mere 40%. The individual's right to choose whichever form of alpine descent needs to be upheld. You, as a citizen of the world, have the inalienable right to live your life the way you choose. Everyone has different ability levels. Whether a two-foot air or a 20-foot air gets you off, it doesn't matter, it's all adrenaline. Realize your own limitations, but don't be afraid to try new things and to push yourself to the next step in snowboarding or any part of your life. Exile was a term we coined for the prejudices we felt were being done to snowboarders around the world. We hope that snowboarders in exile will break down some of those barriers. So from the cast and crew of Snowboarders in Exile, we hope you had as much fun watching it as we did doing it. Snowboarding for Steve Graham. I'm just gonna snowboard till I die.